Yo, welcome back everybody to another video. So today we're going to be talking about React Navigation and how to set it up in today's video. So let's go ahead and get started. So what is React Navigation? Well, React Navigation is the industry way of being able to route between different screens and components in your app for React Native. Now, its documentation is bloody good. It's amazing. As well as its compatibility with both Android and iOS. So let's go ahead and actually talk about how to install it and set it up into our app. So we need to install a couple of components for this to work. Now, fortunately, this works with both Expo and bare bones React Native projects. And since we're making a bare bone React Native project, we have to go through a couple more steps than what Expo has to go through. So what we're going to be doing is first, you have to install React Navigation. So I'm going to do npm install at react dash navigation slash native. And then let it work its magic. And then after that, we need to install a couple of other packages. We're going to be installing React Native Screens and React Native Safe Area Context. And then after that, we need to set it up for iOS and Android. So for iOS, it's really simple. All we have to do is npx pod dash install iOS. And for Android, what we have to do is we have to go into our Android folder. We have to go into app, source, main, then Java, and then this main activity.java file, we need to add a couple of lines of code inside of here. So underneath this snippet of code right here, I'm going to add a, couple, a little bit of Java. This is what React Navigation recommends that you need to add for this to work or else there's gonna be some errors. And then after that, we're gonna to have to install and import, oops, just import this package right here, this Android OS bundle, and then click save. So basically the reason we have to do this specifically for Android is if there's any sort of activity restart, so if there's any sort of difference in the app, it's gonna crash it a lot of times and a lot of people have this issue and this is how you fix it, that's it. So now let's go ahead and set up our navigation container. Remember how I said earlier, we're gonna be changing our index.js file to have our navigation container added to it in the last video, but that's what we're gonna do right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a function called app component is equal to curly braces like so we're going to create a function and inside here we're going to do navigation container and we're going to add app with a self-closing brace whoops like so and i'm going to use prettier to clean it up and we also need to import react so i'm going to do import react from react like so perfect and now we're going to actually registering this component, this function, as opposed to our app. So it's actually going to be registering our navigation navigation container encapsulated with our app. So we have navigation available to our actual app itself. So now that we've con contained our app with our navigation container, we're going to create some routes and do some navigation with it. So before we do begin, um, I think this is really cool and really important to talk about. Uh, the React navigation documentation talks about this really, really well, is what is the perfect purpose of React Navigation? So I'm gonna just quickly talk about what this little area means because it's important for understanding and to be better developers. So basically what they're saying right here is that in a web browser, you can link to different pages using an anchor tag. And when you click it, it would be pushed onto that browser history stack. So let's say you go to Google, you click an anchor tag, then you go to like google.com slash um, apples. So that previous page is then stacked on top sorry that previous page is then stacked on bottom of that new page and well unfortunately react native doesn't have this built in and this is react Nav Na react navigation enters the story so react navigation stack navigator provides a way for your app to transition between screens and manage navigation history and which is really cool so it allows us to be able to navigate between different screens now, a key difference that they state here is that React Navigation's native stack navigator provides gestures and animation that you would expect on Android and iOS when navigating between routes in the stack. So if we wanted animations, let's just like slide from bottom to top of the screen, we can do that. If we wanted like um, fade in, fade out type of animation, we can do that as well. So there's a lot of possibility that you can do with the create native stack navigator. And that is the most common one that React Navigation uses. So that's what we're gonna be using for this app as well. So after that, we need to install the actual native stack. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install, I'm gonna copy this um, snippet of code right here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and install it into our app like so. And so now going back into our app.js file that we 
put right here. What we're going to do is we're going to just clean house and I'm going to get rid of all of this stuff. We don't need any of it. Um, I am going to leave, however, the styles and I'm going to get rid of all of the unused imports that we don't need. We don't need that. We don't need these. And we certainly do not need any of this section right here. We don't need the node. And we can get rid of this dark mode, light mode. We're not going to have the functionality anyhow in the app. Let's get rid of all this stuff. Our text, color scheme, view. We'll add those things later on. But uh, for now, we don't need it. And I'm going to get rid of that safe area view, prettier, and clean it all up. So now we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create our stack navigator uh, variable. So outside of our const app right here, I'm going to do const stack is equal to create navigation stack navigator. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create something called stack.navigator. Now this stack.navigator, you can think of it as the parent telling all of the little children what to do. So in this case, to children will be different screens. So if I did like um, stack dot screen, and inside of here we can define different type of props. So we can do like a name. It will go to home, and we can give it the component that it needs to route to. So it'll be like home screen. That's basically what's happening. That's all you have to do. So let's go ahead and define this home screen. And so inside of my pages home, I'm going to create a new file and I'm gonna call it home.js. And for this, I'm gonna just uh, do a simple import uh, react from react, and I'll do const home screen, and we'll do uh, return a simple view tag, and we'll do uh, text, and we'll just do home screen. So this is something that we haven't covered yet, but it's a good idea we cover it right now. So basically what a uh, view is, you can think of it as a container, which is going to contain um, all the stuff that we would need. So you can't have anything um, inside of React Native without containing it either in a view or a touchable opacity, which is like a button, um, which is pretty simple. So. And I'll do import view and text from whoops, that's weird from react native. And now I'll save it. And I'll also do export default home screen. And I'll just do some prettier, make it a little prettier. So now all we're going to return is a simple container, which is going to say home screen. That's it. And inside of here, we'll go ahead and import it. So this component would then be home screen like so. And I'll use prettier, make it a little prettier. And now if we save it, and now if we run it, it should work and we should see our initial screen as the home screen. Well, we haven't defined the initial screen, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'll do initial route name, and we'll do home. And so now we've defined home as our initial route. So it'll always go to the home page whenever the app starts up. So now let's go ahead and run it and see if it works in both iOS and Android. So I'm gonna do npm start, so start up our Metro server. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a different terminal and I'm gonna do npx um, run npx react native and run Android. And then I'm gonna create another terminal and I'll do npx react dash native and run iOS. So now we're running both iOS and Android just to make sure that they're both working. And so I've opened up both emulators and we can see that it's not running. And the reason that is, is because we forgot to get rid of the safe area view, which is preventing any sort of rendering happening inside of the app. So ideally we would put the safe area view within an actual component itself, but in this case, we don't need it. So now we can see that we have both home screens rendered initially when the app loads for both iOS and Android. So perfect, we set up React Navigation. And now let's go ahead and actually click a button and route to a different route. So remember how earlier I said that you can route between different routes in just regular React using an anchor tag? Well, it's pretty similar to how to do that in React Navigation. Um, the way you do that in React Navigation, all you have to do is go into the actual route that you want to allow the user to route from, 
and we're going to pass a prop. So this prop is going to be called navigation and we have to just give it the navigation right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a touchable opacity opacity and import it touchable opacity and what this is is basically a, um, a button they, it's a piece of text or image or whatever you want it to be that you can press and you can run a certain function. So for this, uh, it's not defined. Let me change the spelling. There we go. So for this, what we're going to do is I'm going to give it a simple text that says go to different page. And we're going to run a function. So on press. So usually in regular React, you would have on click. In React Native, you have to do on press. We're going to run a function, and we're going to do navigation dot navigate, and we're going to be going to this different route. So for this one, I'll create another um, a different home page. So I'll do home uh, two, and I'll save that. And we have an error. There we go. Let's fix that. There we go. Okay, cool. And now we have a different error in here. What does it say? It says that strings must be all oh, right so all strings no matter what have to be encapsulated in a text um in a text tag so text and then you just put whatever you want inside of here like so and now it should work cool so now let me go ahead and create that another home page so i'll do home dot home two dot js and I'll just copy all this stuff, paste it in here, and we'll call this home to screen. And we'll save that just to make sure we have difference. So home to screen like so. And in the app.js file, we have to actually define the route that we're going to be going to, the different route. So I'll do home screen two. I don't know if this why it's not detecting. Home to screen. Oh, that's weird. Home to like so. And now if we go back into our app and we click the button, go to a different page, it says navigation payload is not received. Do you have a screen name that? Oh, whoops, I had a, I had a typo there. So the name is supposed to be two like that because our file name is home TWO, not capital TWO. So now if we click it, we click on uh, go to a different page, it takes us to the different page. If we click it here, it takes us to the other page as well. Perfect, so now we've figured out how to route between different screens. So the last thing I wanna show you guys is, let's say we wanted to continuously allow the user to be able to go back to that screen over and over and over again on the press of a button. This is a very common thing, and even React Navigation has an example of that on the documentation. But all we have to do is replace this dot navigate with a dot push, which is gonna push this route onto the current stack. So let's say we have, um, let me go back to the Android emulator. So we have this uh, stack right here. So right now we only have home in the pyramid and then we stack, we navigate to the home too. So now we have two different things and now we're gonna push home two again onto that stack and then again and again and again and again and again as many times as you want. And then if you wanna go back, we click, click back Then we got rid of that top item from the stack, the other one, the other one, and the other one, all the way up until we go to the beginning. Cool, so in the next video, we'll be talking about how to set up our bottom nav bar like we have in that image that we had, this bottom nav bar right here. Cool, and so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of this home to file since we don't need it anymore. We've learned how to do basic navigation with it. I'll get rid of it from here and I'll get rid of this uh, on press function as well, as well as the text. Clean it up a bit and refresh pressing R. And now if we go back into our emulator, we have to actually refresh the app itself. So I'll do that, npm start, restart the app, and now everything is back to what it was before. It's gonna take some time to load, but that pretty much concludes how to do React Navigation at a beginner level. Oh wait, the import is still there. Let me get rid of that too. Uh, we don't need that. And refresh it all up. There we go. Cool, so now it's working, we're back. Uh, we have navigation set up, and in the next video, we'll be talking about setting up and calling the Jacan API. So stay tuned, hope you guys, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next one, peace.